Hi there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio. I want you to join me as I'm gonna transform this old patio chair with this gorgeous foil. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm grabbing some of our Rust-Oleum 2X, which is a paint and primer all in one. And so trying to brush this project, I try to decide I'm just going to make it easy on myself and spray it because there's a lot of nooks and crannies. Okay, make sure you guys spray that or shake this well. You want to hear that uh, ball rattle, okay? And then don't get too close and just do short strokes normally works the best so that you don't get it on too heavy so that you get any rip drips or runs okay we are back and our chair has been completely painted crying. Again, I used the 2X uh, by Rust-Oleum, which is a paint and primer. It just got my base coat on there a little faster. Normally I'll hand brush everything, um, but I figured I would save myself a little bit of time on this layer. And then our next layer is going to be our Artsy Bill Embellishments Foil Adhesive. This is our first layer to transferring foils. I'm going to be hand brushing this, of course, because this product is not available by um, anything else other than in a bucket. <laughs> so we are going to be hand, um, hand brushing it on. And I always put some of the foil adhesive on what I call a sticky plate. And then I'm gonna spray a tiny bit of water on there uh, just to give it a little bit more, just a little water so it flows a little bit easier Sometimes straight out of the bucket, it is a little thick, and this will definitely help it to flow off of your brush, okay? So when you add the water, mix it on the plate really well so that it's all mixed together before you start brushing with it. And then this is just going to be a process, okay? This is definitely gonna take some time to get full coverage, but this is the last of four chairs um, on this project and I was planning on taking this home and having them as chairs out on our patio but because we ended up getting more studio space we now have room for the table and chairs here so it's going to stay here uh, once it's done. So this is going to be, this is going to take me a couple of take me probably about an hour at least I would say I'm probably gonna have to maybe even do this in two stages of getting the adhesive on uh, everywhere that I could get to within uh, with the piece in this direction I might have to actually foil all these areas and then um, flip it upside down and do the rest so you could start up upside down or start this way, but you're definitely going to have to do it in a couple of uh, stages. And I might have to critique even these areas that I can't see really well because they're a little high for me. <laughs> the foil adhesive, as you can see, it goes on milky white. It will dry completely clear. And um, you wanna wait at least an hour I mean, the longer you can wait, the more patient you can be. Um, normally, the better the transfer is always going to be because it's allowing the product to get to a really good, firm, hard tack. Okay, so that is going to give you your best release. Uh -huh. So if you can be patient, you can let this dry overnight. The foil adhesive will never dry beyond a firm tack. So it is going to always be tacky. Um, and that's a good thing that you don't have to worry about once you apply the adhesive to your project 
and feel like you have to only have so much time before you can come back and transfer your foil uh, with our adhesive the amount of time is unlimited okay like I said it's not going to dry beyond a firm tack so it doesn't matter if you left it for a day two days a week a month I mean it will still be the same a year from now something else could be stuck to it by all means but it's never going to dry beyond a firm tack so once you have your adhesive on let it dry until you've gotten to that point. Uh, like I said, if you're a super patient person like me, just let it sit overnight. You will thank me because I'll guarantee you your transfer will always be better. And then I'm just gonna leave the camera on for a while and you guys can just watch the process. We'll probably speed this up so I don't bore you to death. Um, but I'm gonna say to get the whole piece done, I'm probably at least 30, maybe to 40 minutes. I don't think I'm a full hour, but it will definitely take a little time to get it all covered and make sure I have 100% coverage. If you miss a spot, you're just not going to have any transfer there. Okay, that is about all the chair that I can reach. Um, we're actually gonna foil it first, and then uh, once it's foiled, I'll flip it over so that I can get to all the under parts of the chair so we don't miss any of those. And hopefully you've been able to notice that um, with watching this, it's gone from milky white to completely clear in the areas that it is fully dry. And now we're just gonna let it sit and uh, come back and foil it when it's ready. Okay, we are finally back and ready to foil this chair. This is actually the fourth of a set of three that I'm just finishing up. And I'm gonna be using um, a foil called Pale Gold Fossil, which is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I have found when working on projects like this, where you're going to be working um, on a whole bunch of different little sections. I find it's easier to start at the bottom and work to your top in case anything falls down, okay? So if a little piece of foil like flaked off and fell, it could get caught on the lower sections. So I've cut a couple of pieces of um, foil, okay, that will be easier to work with. And I'm just going to go ahead and push those, push it on there, okay? Just use your hand to kind of smooth it out. I'm going to get on my chair, guys. Give me a little bit lower here, so I'm sorry if my head's in the way, but uh, this should be able to show you, okay? So I'm like using toothbrushes. Um, these are actually... Um, firm and I've even cut them shorter so that they'll scrub a little bit harder and then I try to find the shortest bristle little um, scrub brush I possibly can. Uh, sometimes you'll find, okay, I have to find sections where I haven't put the adhesive on so I can actually touch this, okay? Um, sometimes on the bigger areas you might find okay with using like your nail brush. Um, if you're getting a good release here, uh, I can actually wrap this piece that I put on here and try to get like three sides maybe. Um, it'll probably be a little hard to wrap the bottom because I didn't go all, I let it bend at the bottom here a little bit, but we can probably maximize this piece while I have it in place and try to get as much coverage for releasing it. Now, the foil that I'm working with um, is called Pale Gold Fossil. 
and you can see how it's releasing and when it releases it looks frosted okay because this foil is actually on what we call a frosted carrier sheet so it makes it look dull um, but when it transfers it is nice and bright and shiny okay so while i have this on here i'm going to go ahead and release this side and then just wrap this around try to get that side and then also i might as well just go for the back and i'm just going to keep releasing it as i do it um, just trying to show you guys different ways to accomplish and work on a piece that has so many small areas to deal with, okay? And I'm probably gonna have to get my head in here somehow <laughs> and critique and make sure that we've got the coverage that we're hoping for. So I'm going at it with my toothbrush. And most of the time, you'll be able to tell your coverage level by how much foil was actually left onto the carrier sheet. And if you're finding sections that just didn't grab right or transfer where you needed them to, huh. Sometimes you just gotta get in here and really, really scrub to get that to work. There's so much area that I was putting on the foil adhesive. Um, sometimes I find when there's so much area to cover on stuff like this, because it's you know four different sides on a leg, that it's easy to kind of miss some of it. So if you find an area that you totally forgot, don't worry about it. If there's no tack in that area at all, you can always come back, uh, apply a little bit more foil adhesive in that area and just get the foil to stick, okay? So this is going to be, I don't want to say time consuming, but you'll, you'll spend some time trying to get this completely done, okay? I'll critique that side later but you can continue to use what's ever left on your carrier sheet and at least finish out one section. So a little backstory, even on this project, uh, I originally had planned to do these chairs in a uh, rust it look and then after I got one done I decided that was not really what I wanted so that's when I changed my mind and started doing them all with the foil okay um, the other thing that's nice to have and I'm gonna go grab one here in a second is just a soft rag so that you can wipe off any little bit of pieces of foil that are dropping this foil again called pale gold fossil um, it's a super easy release, so that was one of the main reasons why I wanted to start from the bottom and work my way up to the top. Um, and I'm going to continue to work on areas that I can easily see from this direction, and then we'll uh, eventually turn this, okay? And I'll keep moving my camera angle too as needed. Um, so. You don't always have to start from the bottom and work your way up, but again, if you've got a foil that is releasing super, super easy, um, it might be a good idea just in case any of the, any of the foil just falls off of the carrier sheet. Um, it won't get caught um, on the lower section. And the one thing I want to also point out is I've changed direction of this foil. Sometimes that's not always advisable, um, but this foil seems beautifully as well as I can change the angle of it. So 
I was using it on the leg this direction, and then I'm using it across the top in this direction. So uh, it works either way. Okay. You won't see you won't see that you change direction with this particular foil. But that's not always the case with all foils. So you would want to maybe even do a sample board and just make sure, test the foil, see if it makes any difference if you change the direction. Okay, one other thing you want to be aware of is the area that is clear right here where I've already transferred the foil. You don't want to put that up against um, any area that has the foil adhesive on it, okay? Because that can get really stuck. So I will flip it this direction here and just get the edge, okay? And then come across the top. So be aware that the foil, whether it's a piece that has the heat or the transfer on it or not, um, you know, any of this can get stuck. And this whole thing is pretty much transferred with the foil adhesive except for the under area. Okay, so I'll have to flip it over and get that finished out. Um, the other thing is I got a real, real straight line there. Okay, I try to avoid those if I can. Uh, and I wasn't just watching it really well there because it's easier for sections to seam together if they're more irregular than uh, a straight seamed line, okay? But that one did disappear well, so I got lucky. <laughs> Make sure you are critiquing as you go just so that you don't have to come back and try to work on uh, any other area later. Okay, since my foil likes to curl, as you can see, I'm going to find that it's going to be easier to cut smaller pieces so it doesn't want to curl and get caught on the back. And then on all these uh, pieces of scraps that you guys have, hold on to them because they will come in handy to just go in and repair little areas if you find there's just some little spot that uh, the foil didn't attach. Okay, I'll come through, use my finger, um, use uh, the toothbrush. I'm finding that the corners, okay, the edges on the corners is probably the area that seems to be taking a little bit of extra uh, effort, okay? Oh, and another thing that I do get people always asking or questioning is, um, Every tool that I'm using uh, to scrub and transfer is stiff, okay? They're plastic bristles, but they are stiff bristles. And um, you're going to find that that is going to be your best tool for transferring. Uh -oh. For transferring, okay? Sometimes if the foil is a super easy release, Rubbing at you with your fingers will help because the heat of your hands is also a way to kind of warm the foil up and get a good transfer as well. So as I'm rubbing on it, you might just see little bits of pieces just falling um, to the ground. And that was one of the main reasons why I want to start from the bottom and work my way to the top is this foil tends to um, easily release from the carrier sheet. So we're going to get a couple more pieces going here and I think I can do these two areas at the same time. So as I was indicating, um, we are using plastic bristle brushes. I try to get a nice stiff bristle because I feel it works the best. 
Uh, I do like to smooth it on with my hands or a soft cloth to begin with, and then come back and um, scrub. But some of the foils are gonna take more scrubbing than others. But just realize if you just put the foil up and all you did was rub with your finger or a soft cloth, it's probably not going to transfer really well. It definitely needs a little bit more um, scrubbing to get it to transfer. And the other thing I want you guys to notice is I'm not so worried about when I'm coming back and trying to fill in those negative spots, which direction this particular foil is being used. Like I said, it can go vertical, it can go horizontal, <laughs> and it seems to just blend in no matter what I do, okay? So super, super forgiving foil. Okay, the other thing is, you guys, I'm gonna continue to work on this. We're gonna leave the camera going so that uh, you can watch the process. We'll probably speed some of this up. Um, and if I feel like there's any good tips and tricks that I need to share with you, um, we'll probably just add them on a voiceover or something, okay? So enjoy. Hey guys, we are to our final step, which is really just to protect our piece. And I'm gonna be using our final coat wipe on varnish because it's gonna make this project go really quick at this point. So I'm using one of our microfiber sponges that I keep in a Ziploc baggie. Um, I've already got this loaded pretty well and it's super easy to work with. All you do is just wipe it onto your surface, which with something like this that could be so tedious to have to brush, this is going to make it go so quick where you're just going to wipe it everywhere, okay? Um, it takes only about 10 to 15 minutes for it to dry. 
So once you're done wiping it on, and you hit every spot is probably going to almost be dry enough to go back and start all over again. I would suggest probably five or six layers to protect it because it continues to build in its durability as, as you layer and layer uh, the coats on here. So um, that's it guys. Okay, our final application to finishing off this project. Thank you so much for joining me for this fun tutorial. For a complete list of all materials and supplies, you'll find them in the description below. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials.